But anyway, so uh, now uh, we are at the time to begin the very last lecture of uh, an, uh, any kind of talk of this uh, school workshop. And this is the second talk, talk of uh, David Creek. So David, uh, you are welcome. Yes, thank you again. Um, yeah, well, Lottie already said, this is the second talk. Um, so I will shortly recap what I uh, did yesterday for those who weren't there. And um, so in contrast to many of the other talks, I'm not talking about spaces with mixed smoothness and um, these squares methods, but rather about um, classical Sobolev spaces with isotropic smoothness. But I pose for this classical spaces um, a more difficult question. Namely, I want to characterize the error for, um, for arbitrary sampling points and not just for, um, uh, not just find any uh, good sampling point set, which is uh, also very interesting, of course, but um, often you cannot choose sampling points. Um, so, oh, ah, okay. Here. So here was the problem. Um, omega is a bounded and convex set in RD, and we have some norm space of functions, which is the Sobolev space on um, this domain, and a set of sampling points, and then the uh, error for this set well, for LQ recovery, LQ approximation was defined like this. So this is the minimal worst case error of a um, function of an algorithm which uses this set of sampling points. Yeah, and I put a lin here if it's, um, uh, if I only consider linear algorithms. And um, yes, as I said, we did this for classical Sobolev spaces. So um, weak derivatives up to order S should be in LP. And um, so where's the result? from last time, summary was in the end. Here it is. <laughs> so last time um, we uh, looked into this relation, um, which says that the error of a given point set is there are two cases if we recover in the LQ norm and Q is greater than P, then it is basically determined by the covering radius of the point set. So um, we take the L infinity norm of the distance functions, which is the covering radius or um, the radius of the largest hole in the point set to some power. And if Q is smaller than P, then is, this is determined by some average hole size to the power S. S is smoothness, and um, this average hole size is also called uh, the um, distortion of the point set. Yeah, we can also do this for non-integer integer smoothness, triply Sokin spaces, and um, on manifolds. And yeah, so what does this mean? So uh, basically, you can give me any set of data, and I can tell you how good it is. Uh, up to constants. So very amazing. <laughs> I was told yesterday I should be a little more enthusiastic. So, wow. <laughs> okay, so for integration, it's the same as for L1 approximation. So we know now for any point set how um, we can determine how good it is. And um, the second question which I posed was, um, so how do we characterize um, for a sequence of point sets um, when do they have the optimal order of convergence? So for mixed smoothness, we do not even know one. In some cases we do, but for mixed cases, for many cases, we do not even know one such sequence. And now we want to classify all such sequences for isotropic smoothness. And um, well, and for this, we have to look into the optimal uh, distortion of point sets. And um, here uh, we see that 
the covering radius as well as the distortion is um, for optimal points of order n to the minus one over d. Many of you might have seen that, um, but let me shortly um, explain why this is the case. So for the upper bound, um, we have some bounded domain, which we can of course cover with um, n cubes, which have side length um, approximately n to the minus one over d. And now if we choose a point set um, by putting one point out of the domain in each such cube, then we have a covering radius of order n to the minus one over d and ignoring the cubes which do not intersect uh, omega. So this is an up point set which yields the upper bound and for every um, for every point set we have this lower bound for the um, average whole size. Um, why is that? Um, because we can just do our volume argument. So um, if we have a domain and um, our point set, then we put a small ball um, around each point of radius cn to the minus one over d. And if we um, choose this constant c here, small enough, then the volume of the union of all these balls is at most half the volume of the whole domain, which means on the other half of the domain, um, the distance to the point set is at least a constant times n to the minus one over d. And so on half of, of the domain, we have this uh, lower bound here. And so the L gamma norm is also larger than n to the minus one over d for every gamma. Yeah, so the minimal possible distortion is of order n to the minus one over d. And as we know um, that the error is described by this distortion, we can now say that um, a given sequence of point set is order optimal for the old Q approximation problem on um, uh, the Sobolev space with smoothness S, uh, if and only if the distortion uh, so the L gamma norm of the distance function is um, behaves like n to the minus one over d, where um, gamma uh, was this threshold for q smaller than p and just infinity for q larger or equal than p. Yeah, and of course we get the same for integration. Um, So if we want to consider the problem of numerical integration, then the point set is optimal if the L gamma norm um, with gamma being uh, S times one minus one over P to the minus one of the um, distance function is of order N to the minus one over D. So here's a simple example. Um, I just chose some parameters, um, namely uh, here I put, oh, sorry, smoothness equal to two. Yeah, um, dimension also equal to two and <laughs> uh, also P equal to two, everything too. Um, and I consider this domain in R2, and I want to consider the problem of integration or L1 approximation, so Q is equal to one. And this means that um, the error is determined by the L gamma norm with gamma equal to four. So gamma was S times one minus one over P to the minus one. So it's equal to four. So the, um, the quality of the point set for this integration problem is described by the L4 norm of the distance function. And if we, for example, have a um, data set with um, one hole, which is larger, then we can say this one is still optimal. Um, if we have a hole um, of radius uh, n to the minus one over three, um, even so, the optimal covering radius would be n to the minus one half. So 
So we might have a larger hole or several larger holes, um, which are um, uh, suboptimal by a polynomial factor, and still we get the optimal order of conversions. Okay, so this is a very simple example. It gets more involved, of course, if you have not this uniformity, but um, some very different uh, um, sizes of holes in the data set. But then you have just to compute the L gamma norm. Okay. And so um, I come to the third question, which I asked, which was our original motivation. Namely, one, we wanted to know how good are random sampling points in comparison to optimal sampling points. So in particular, we consider the case that the, um, the sampling points, they come in independent and uniformly distributed. And yeah, we just have to deal with them and see how good we can be with them. We can choose them optimal. And um, as I already mentioned, this um, yeah, motivation somehow also comes from um, many papers, machine learning, where this is the standard assumption. And I think this is somehow a natural model. If you cannot choose your data points uh, that you assume that they come in IID. But yeah, depends on the application. And um, so the philo philosophical question behind this maybe is, um, whether uh, optimal information is something special or whether random points will just be optimal. Okay, and um, in the sense of the um, worst case error, which I always talked about so far, um, this means we have to just to study the covering radius of random points and the distortion of random points. And uh, those are natural quantities, so of course, um, people have studied those before, and we can use uh, the results. Firstly, the covering radius of random points, so the largest hole in a random point set, is uh, strongly connected to the so-called poor collector problem. So what's this? Um, if we split the domain into m regions of equal volume, uh, Yes, maybe. Oh, maybe the domain is just a line, and we split it into m regions of equal volume, one to m. <laughs> then um, we roughly need so with very high probability we need um, m times log m independent uniformly distributed points to hit all these um, regions. To have a point in each of these regions. Yeah. It's called Kupor collector's problem because you can, of course, it's it's a discrete thing. So the question is if you want to gather a whole set of um, uh, maybe your favorite uh, football team um, coupons uh, and you draw one randomly each time you buy one, then um, the question is how long do you need to get a full set? And you roughly need m times log m um, if there are m different players. Uh, yes. And um, you can, of course, turn that around. So if you consider the largest hole in a point set of n points, then this is typically a volume log n over n. This is not very hard to prove, but um, uh, uh, we don't have to prove it, it's well known. And um, so here is what, here we, is the precise statement for any alpha, so the expected value of the um, covering radius to the alpha is of order log n to the n to the one over t. Yeah, and um, there's a nice paper by uh, these two authors here. Um, which who proved this for quite general metric measure spaces, in partic particular, these convex domains are okay. So this is the covering radius of random points. Please interrupt me if there are any um, comments or questions. 
and now the distortion of random points and um, the distortion of random points is better. So what's the distortion is was the um, expected value of uh, um, the distortion is the um, average whole size in the point set. And um, if we take the expected value of this to the alpha and then to the one over alpha, this behaves like one over n to the one over t. Yeah, so um, uh, what does it mean? Um, so uh, in a random point set, you can find a hole um, with um, uh, volume log n over n. Yeah, but this will just be one or two such holes. The, by far the most holes will be of order one over n. And um, how do you actually prove this? Well, for example, if um, you consider the L1 average and also only the first moment, the other cases are similar, it, it becomes the most easy because um, now um, we consider the expectation of um, the integral of the distance function to the point set. Yeah, and we use Fubini, of course, and then um, we have this. And for every single point, the expected distance to the point set is, of course, of order n to the minus 1 over d. Well, I say, of course, why is that um, the probability that you, um, so if you put a ball of volume um, t over n around your point, the probability of um, um, not hitting this ball is um, like this. So the probability of not hitting it with the first point is one minus t over n if the volume of omega is one and um, not hitting it with n points is of this order. So um, it's roughly e to the minus t, the probability that you don't hit this ball of volume t over n. So um, this concentrates. Um, uh, so the random value of t concentrates around a constant and um, this means that the expected value of the distance is roughly uh, the radius of a ball with volume one over n. Okay, and there are much more precise statements in the literature. Um, Martino is writing something. Okay, <laughs> just that he's uh, busy with his kids. <laughs> um, there are more precise statements in the literature which um, give even uh, the, the statement that this random variable, so if I multiply here um, in this relation with the right hand side, um, that uh, then this even converges almost surely and in L alpha to a constant, which is determined by the volume of the domain. There's a nice paper by um, Kohart. Like you can find this. So we have even much better control of this distortion of random points. And now if we insert this in the question, how good is the error of um, uniformly independent points? Um, then it turns out because in the case Q larger than P, the um, covering radius was what mattered that um, N random points are as good as N over log N optimal points. So they are a bit worse, upper and lower bound. And, but in the case Q smaller than P, they are up to constants exactly as good as um, N optimal points. So um, 
yeah, this is just what the conclusion says. For Q smaller than P, if we do a Q approximation in the Sobolev space WPS and Q is smaller than P, then uh, independent uniformly distributed points are optimal. And so this means um, optimal sampling points, optimal information is nothing special at all. And um, in the other case, it is special but not so special because we only use a logarithm. Yeah, we, um, we proved this in the paper um, with Matthias Sonnleitner and um, the case uh, where we lose the logarithm, you can find actually already in this paper with um, Eike Hinrichs, Erich Novak, Joscha Prochno and Mario Ulrich. Um, yeah, and there, we conjectured the other case and now we proved it. Um, yeah, that's it. And uh, uh, maybe for integration, um, again, um, we get that uh, independent uniformly distributed points are optimal if P is larger than one. Yeah. <laughs> Back again, uh, mm, there was a paper by uh, Martin Ela and others um, who already showed that for uh, W, I think it was W2S of omega um, and integration. So this was the earlier than all these papers. Um, there they showed that we lose at most a logarithm and uh, we thought that actually we shouldn't use the logarithm and so uh, now we know that we don't lose it. Okay, so um, still staying in the uh, setting where our information is get um, is obtained from um, independent uniformly distributed samples, it also makes sense to look at a different error criterion, namely the randomized error, which appeared um, in Albert's talk. Uh, let me shortly look in the chat, there's something else. Okay, nothing for everybody. <laughs> um, uh, what's the difference? So now we take, um, uh, for the error, we take the expected distance of F and our approximation, and then take the supremum over the function class. Yeah, so we consider a randomized algorithm using random points and a random recovery map, and we take the supremum of the expected distance as our error criterion. And the difference is that previously we had the supremum inside. And um, yeah, already um, uh, Volodya and Albert in um, Albert's talk, they discussed about this difference a little. So it's both interesting. Um, of course, uh, if we have the supremum inside, then the um, quantity is larger. So the quantity we consider now could be smaller or the same, but it cannot be larger. And um, so what do both quantities mean? Um, if we consider um, this, what we considered earlier, the expected value of this, um, of the supremum, then this meant uh, that um, with high probability, so if this error is small, then with high probability, you have a small error for every function. And now for this weaker error criterion, um, we only want that um, for every fixed function with high probability, the error should be small. So this new error criterion fits better to the case that you have just one function which you want to approximate from this class, which you don't know. And the previous one was rather 
um, you have random points and you want to use them for many functions. Okay, so if you just have one function, you could consider this randomized error. And um, already it is uh, well known what one can achieve with optimal um, algorithms in this randomized setting. Um, we can define similar quantities as before. So um, the error, um, the randomized error for a given point set is now the minimal error of an algorithm which uses this point set. And um, yes, if I write little n here in the argument, this is the minimal error which can be achieved with um, n function values chosen randomly um, according to an arbitrary distribution which you like best. Yes, and there is a so as I said, you might hope that for this randomized error, you get a smaller upper bound. But that's not the case if you consider optimal points. So um, Peter Marte proved um, that for the randomized error, you don't get anything better for this um, LQ approximation on Sobolev spaces um, if uh, than for the deterministic error. Yeah, um, in his paper, he actually only considered the cube, I think. But in this case, this doesn't matter because um, the upper bound is obvious and the lower bound um, can be applied um, also for other domains because our domain uh, contains a cube. So, um, yeah, we do not gain anything compared to the deterministic error, and we may just as well consider um, this uniform deterministic error bound. Um, and optimal points are already given by this de deterministic point with a small covering radius or small um, mesh size, as it's also called. Okay, one exception is that we now might also allow smoothness smaller than d over P, so the functions needn't be continuous anymore um, because in the randomized setting, uh, function values, it is enough if they are well-defined well almost surely, but I don't want to go into that. And um, yeah, so that's that about optimal points, but still we are in the, um, in the setting that our information is given by independent uniformly distributed samples and we just have to deal with it. And now the question is, um, do we lose anything compared to optimal points, which we know are deterministic? And um, so this is now work in progress where also Erich Novak comes in and uh, we just proved that um, in this case, uh, IID uniformly distributed points are optimal for all Q smaller than infinity. Yeah, so in the, the, the deterministic case, they were only optimal if Q is smaller than P. Now they are optimal for all Q smaller than infinity. And um, yeah, this means that um, independent uniformly distributed sampling is no restriction. And you don't have to be sad if you just have this information available. And actually we think that it also holds for Q equal to infinity. And um, if in the case that P is not equal to infinity, um, but uh, we need to finish the proof there. <laughs> Um, but we also, we do know that it is not optimal in the case P equal to Q equal to infinity. So we actually, we think this is the only case where we uh, lose something compared to optimal points. Okay. Um, so why is that? Um, what's the difference between the, um, to the deterministic setting? Um, 
first in the case uh, q smaller than p there's no difference so uh, we already know that um, iid points are optimal in this um, uniform error sense um, so they are also optimal in the randomized error sense um, so we only need to consider the case q larger than p and um, so what's the difference here for the deterministic error um, as i said it's the philosophy is we draw the sampling points first and then we want to apply the these sampling points for many functions okay and if we draw the sampling points first then we have seen there will be a large hole of volume log n over n so not just one over n like most, but there will be one which is log n over n. And if we now apply the points to a bump function in this large hole, um, then uh, no algorithm will be able to see this bump. So it cannot distinguish the bump from zero function or from its negative. And so the error is at least the acunum of this bump. And um, yeah, so we will not be able to see this bump, but for the randomized error, the order is different. So if we fix the bump first of this size, if we first fix a function, for example, a bump like this, then it is very improbable that the random point set will miss this precise bump. So there will be a large hole, but it will most probably be somewhere else. So um, this is the difference. Only the case uh, q equals to uh, p equals to infinity is an exception um, because in this case um, we can um, consider such a bump with uh, um, volume log n over n and put all the mass inside but we get for free, we get, can cover the whole rest of the domain also with such bumps because uh, only for the norm in the Sobolev space only matters the supremum of the, um, of the derivative. So we get uh, all these other bumps for free and then with high probability, we will miss one of these bumps. And so we cannot distinguish the function which has uh, a positive bump at one of these with the one having a negative bump. So this is the difference in the case P equals to infinity. Okay, this was just the intuition. Are there any questions so far? Okay. No questions, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> very good. And I want to prove uh, one case, namely the non-optimality for p equals q equals to infinity. Why this? Uh, because um, uh, it's a school. <laughs> it's also a school, not just a conference here. And I think it's uh, nice um, to have seen at least once uh, how one can prove um, lower bounds for randomized algorithms. Because then you cannot um, uh, cannot um, use uh, this fooling function argument uh, in the in the previous way anymore because then um, uh, if you fix the function first then the points um, uh, then you will probably see it so you rather need many functions and argue in a way that uh, for one of these functions the algorithm will be that uh, or for from uh, a huge um, uh, proportion of these functions. Okay, so how do we do it? Um, we uh, fix a parameter m, which is of order n over log n, n over two log n to be more precise. And we put, um, we choose bump functions in um, holes of this uh, size. Put many little balls of this volume in the domain, and in each we put such a bump, fi. And then we know from the deterministic setting 
um, that we can arrange these functions fi in a way such that the um, Sobolev norm is one and the uh, um, L infinity norm is larger than m to the minus smoothness divided by the dimension. Well, that's actually simple scaling. We take a uh, bump function, the unit ball, and scale it to this um, little balls. Okay. And then we define a function class F, which is just given by all um, sums of these functions with plus or minus one. Okay, this was no question, I think. Um, okay, so now we have this uh, class of consisting of um, two to the m different functions. And um, for all these functions, the Sobolev norm is still one because we consider p equal to infinity and they have this joint support. And um, now for any algorithm that uses the random sampling point set, um, we have that the randomized error um, in the L infinity norm, um, which, uh, well, this is just the definition here, um, is of course larger than just the supremum over this uh, class F of two to the M different functions. And um, now here comes the central um, trick which is um, very old. Uh, you can, it's often called the Bachwalov trick because he used it first in this context. Um, namely, to lower bound this uh, quantity, you just um, use an average. So of course the supremum is um, larger than the average over the function class F. So, um, now I put for every, uh, no, I replace this supremum here just by the average over F. And um, well, I can interchange these two averages and I have as a lower bound, uh, the expected value of the average of differences. Okay. And, um, but now we know because of the co power collector problem that with uh, constant probability, um, the random point that misses one of these balls. Yeah, because there is a um, hole of um, size log n over n. So it misses one of these balls. And um, this means that the algorithm, no matter how the recovery um, map is, it cannot um, determine the sign of the corresponding bump, whether the epsilon i in the function class is a plus or a minus. So at least for one of these two functions, um, so we can split the um, function class into um, pairs and uh, where a pair is just changing the plus and the minus in the bump, which we missed. And for one of these functions, um, the error has to be larger than the norm because um, you cannot distinguish both. And so uh, for one, you have a negative or positive value and the error must be larger than the, si the height of the bump. And this means for at least half of the function in our class, we have the error um, equal to the supremum norm of the fi or larger, and this means that also in the average, we have an estimate like this. Uh, and now um, this is of order, uh, so this is just equal to a constant times m to the minus s over d. And now if I take the expectation, then of course this uh, stays. Okay. Uh, this was just with high probability, but um, you know what I mean, I think. Yeah, so um, you get that you actually lose this logarithmic factor. Okay, and up around for this, I have to wait for the paper. 
Okay, and now I also want to talk um, for this randomized error um, about the integration problem. And um, the integration problem is very different because here you actually gain a lot if you consider the randomized error criterion instead of the deterministic error criterion. So, um, uh, you, what do you gain? You gain this order n to the minus one half. And this can already be found in a paper by Bachwalow from 1962. Um, he didn't uh, write down the proof, so I say stated. Um, if you actually want to see the proof, then um, you can, for the lower bound, you can look into um, the lecture notes of Erich Novak. And the upper bound, um, well, there are many papers about that. Um, for example, Stefan Heinrich has a nice uh, overview of those type of results. And but I want to uh, tell you how the upper bound works. If you don't know yet, um, what do you do? You just do L2 approximation. And for L2 approximation, then um, you get uh, this kind of error. This is what we did before. And you use n half points for this task. And then um, from the function which you uh, recovered, you can compute the integral precisely. And of the remainder, you can do a standard Monte Carlo method, so direct simulation um, using um, independent uniformly distributed points. And uh, then you gain this additional n to the minus one half because this is the error of the um, standard Monte Carlo method. If the L2 norm times the L2 norm, which is smaller than um, this first part. Oh. Okay. So you get the optimal order if you use n half deterministic points for L2 approximation and the other half of the points for um, estimating the integral of the remainder by standard Monte Carlo. And now the question is, if you only have independent uniformly distributed points, can you achieve the same? And from the thing which I wrote down previously for L2 approximation, we know that we can replace the first and half deterministic points also by independent uniformly distributed points in this algorithm. And we get the same error for L2 approximation, yeah, because um, we said we get the same for LQ approximation whenever Q is smaller than infinity. And this means that, um, uh, yeah, in all cases, independent and uniformly distributed samples are optimal for the integration problem with respect to this randomized error criterion. Okay, so these were the three questions which I wanted to ask um, uh, and answered more or less for the um, case of isotropic smoothness. And um, so in the end, we can of course ask these questions for many other types of function classes too. And I just want to give a short glimpse on the case of mixed smoothness because I think many people are interested here in mixed smoothness. And um, so what is mixed smoothness? Uh, you have seen this um, uh, quite often this week. So now we consider the space of functions um, in LP such that all mixed derivatives um, are again in LP, but um, we consider all mixed derivatives where each um, a coordinate in each coordinate direction you are allowed to um, take a derivative of order s so not the sum is equal to s but you also allow mixed derivative so the highest derivative which appears here is like of order s times d okay so this is a smaller class than um 
class of isotropic smoothness S. And um, yes, you have seen it. And as a norm, you could take like the sum of all the LP norms. And this class is much harder to study. Yeah, um, I think Volodya said in the beginning of the conference that for um, uh, isotropic smoothness, uh, much is the same in d dimensions as it is in one dimensions proof technique uh, wise. Um, and um, this is not the case anymore for um, mixed smoothness. And so we consider only a special case. So we consider the case that oh, omega is the d torus. So basically, it's a cube where um, opposite faces are identified. So it can be described by um, uh, Fourier coefficients with respect to the um, uh, auto, uh, with respect to the Fourier system, the trigonometric polynomials, and the Hilbert space case p equals to two. Okay, and um, yeah, just as an example because the Hilbert space case somehow seem, should be the easiest, most natural one. But maybe it isn't. <laughs> okay, so what is known about optimal point sets? In the case that we do a Q approximation with Q larger than two, then it no, is known that sparse grids are optimal. So they look like this in the picture. And uh, this was proven for the case of um, uniform approximation by uh, Volodya Temlyakov. And um, the proof for Q smaller than infinity can be found in a paper by Sung and Bernheit and Tino Ulrich. Um, yeah, and it's all uh, an overview you can find in the book hyperbolic cross approximation. And for Q smaller equal or equal than two, we still don't know any optimal point set. Um, so far, as you saw in Tino's talk, the best known point set is obtained um, via subsampling from, from IID uniformly distributed points. Um, but we do not know whether this uh, point set is optimal. We do not even know the optimal order of convergence for this uh, um, problem. Uh, if you ask me, I would guess um, that actually you can get the optimal order of convergence by sub subsampling from um, a random point set of cardinality n times log n, but I'm not sure. Um, whether the subsampling procedure is already the right one, <laughs> but it is just a guess. Okay, and what do we know about independent uniformly distributed points? Um, for the deterministic error, well, actually we only know at the case uh, P, uh, Q equals to two, so L2 approximation. And uh, for the deterministic error, um, you've seen this in Mario Ulrich's talk, um, we have proven an upper bound of uh, this form. So um, IID uniformly distributed points are at least as good as N over log N um, uh, optimal points. Okay, and of course they are not better than n optimal points. So somewhere in between. <laughs> and what's the algorithm? The algorithm is a least squares method. In this case, um, for the torus, it's just uh, without weights. So with equal weights, I should say. And for the randomized error, on the other hand, we know that uh, independent and uniformly distributed points are optimal. Yeah, there's a multi-level Monte Carlo procedure with which we can obtain 
the optimal order of convergence with independent and uniformly distributed points. And um, yes, so this is what we know, and I want to uh, finish um, with some uh, wild conjectures. Uh, so from what we know, it could be possible that the phenomena are exactly the same as for isotropic smoothness. So that we have for the um, deterministic error criterion that random points are optimal if and only if um, uh, Q is smaller than P, in this case, P equal two, and not optimal up to an o up to a logarithm in the other case. Um, yeah, it could be possible everything fits so far, but probably this is quite hard to answer because um, this would uh, mean, um, especially the first case would mean that um, we solve also the problem for the optimal order of convergence in this case, Q equal to two. And so it must be hard to answer. And um, for the randomized error, it could also be possible that um, IID um, uniformly distributed points are optimal in all cases. But right now we only know the case Q equal to two. Okay, and that's it. You have 10 extra minutes for the weekend. Uh, I hope um, you did enjoy my talk and also <laughs> the conference. And as I'm the last speaker, I want to emphasize again how great this conference was. And thank you again for organizing it. Uh, thank you very much, David, for your uh, compliments and for a very nice talk. <clears throat> so now we have time for discussion. Are there any questions, uh, comments, remarks? Maybe I can then ask one. Oh yeah, can you, go ahead. Mario. Can you explain what, why this would solve the order of convergence? Well, because you, we need the lower bound then, right? And it's not implied. Yes. That is. Yes. So this this is only. Uh, it's not like there is an idea which would solve the problem. But if this statement was true, if we had such a lower bound, um, that this expected error is actually larger than this, then because of the upper bound, which we already have, this means that this quantity here uh, has to be um, uh, smaller by this log n, and we would have um, the optimal order of convergence. No, but, no, but we <laughs> could have the expect a lower bound for the ex expected error, but still be a point set which is better, right? Or, or what did I get wrong? Um, so we know an upper bound for, for this thing, which is like, uh, um, how is it? N to the minus S, uh, log N to the S, uh, D minus one, um, uh, SD, I must say like this. And if we now compare these two things, then we would get an upper bound for the arrow with n points of this form n to the minus s log n to the s minus one, right? And the lower bound is known. <laughs> Where is the log n now? Uh, I'm, I'm somewhat confused. Would you know why right? is the optimal error there in, in, in the right? There is an n divided log n, so. Ah, I, don't get, maybe I will talk later. <laughs> uh, yes, so 
So the thing is the, the upper bound for this, which we know differs from the lower bound for optimal points at most by this log n. And if we know that it is worse than the um, optimal points by log n, then um, we know how good the optimal points are. But um, as I said, this is only like intuition thing. Uh, it's not intuition that this implies uh, this. If I know, if I'm not, I'm confused now. <laughs> um, so this really implies this, but uh, that this is true is just intuition. But isn't there a shift uh, with one half and one of a Q somehow missing? One half and one over Q. You 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 go from two to Q, right? Uh, no, I'm just considering the case Q equals two now. Ah, okay, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, we can. Uh... Yeah. Okay. What are are there any other questions, comments, remarks? Uh, if not, that uh, let me uh, thank you, all the speakers, all the lecturers, and the audience, and everybody who participated, uh, and also the special uh, thanks to uh, our uh, IT queen uh, Yelena Alfarova. So thank you very much to everybody, and so we are done. Volodya, I also would like to thank the organizers for, for putting up such a nice conference.